access to other moves. Because the this right fucking here. Yeah, I was best during the late Tekken Tag Two to early Tekken Seven. After I was best at the uh, at, at Tekken Five. That was like the first one of the first like Tekken Five and Street Fighter Third Strike were the two like first games I tried to become competitive at, and I was better at Tekken Five than I was at Street Fighter Three Third Strike. I was a lot better at Street Fighter at um, Tekken Five than I was at uh, Street Fighter. And I was pretty good at Tekken 4 as well for like my region of young high schoolers or preteens. Not like anything national, just like the arcades around here. Um, the only time I would get bodied in Tekken 5 is when I would run across someone who knew like about how to do Korean backdash. And I'd ask them, like, hey, how do you do that? Like, what, like, 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 what is that? How do you do it? Motherfucker wouldn't show me. Sucking Lao. This Law player would do that shit all the time. And I'd be like, Bodying everybody else, then he'd show up and fuck me shit up because I couldn't catch him. I didn't know how to do it back. It was like the fight games are hard. It's motherfuckers wouldn't teach me because arcades are at, like people have this methodical myth, myth, mythological, uh, myth, whatever, this myth about what the arcade was like. Yeah, people talk, you know, Jack, no. No, they didn't. A lot of folks were like that. In the arcades, people were assholes. Especially if you were a kid or a high schooler and they were grown ass people. Mm -mm. Not at all. I'd go back, I'd go back. And, you know, I, I didn't ask the guy after a while, after a couple of times. He was like, no, fuck you. Figure it out. I was like, what? Like, you're doing something I doesn't look possible. How do you do that? He goes, I don't know. Just, I'm just moving. It's like, Really, bro? You're just moving? Really? These states, states modify your character. Really? You're just moving? Is that, is that what's happening here? Really? They're going to be like that, huh? So, yeah. I think folks who, like, really love the arcade or thought, like, it was this, like, great kumbaya place, because it wasn't, um, were the folks who were, like, on the inside, right? That were the in crowd. And I wasn't. So I don't have those fond memories of it. It was a shitty ass place to be. I just went there. I wanted to play games. In a torrent, you don't teach. In torrent, you don't teach shit. No, fuck torrent. Fuck torrent. Get bodied. You'll learn later. In torrent, you don't teach because it's competition. And but if it's casual, then I teach. I feel, but I am a person that if I ask, you don't won't teach. Don't want me to teach you. Yeah, yeah. That I mean that too. Totally. That that's totally thing. I, I I'll still teach. Someone doesn't want. To, who won't teach me? Heck no. It's a nice car to do this in Japan. Japan arcades are nice and good energy. You say, I believe, stank. Talk about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Japan car, Japan arcades are nicer on that. Yeah, at, at the at the tippy top level, everyone's kind of will hide something sometimes. Sometimes. I may not tell you exactly why you're losing it to them if you're like right on the same level. Especially if you're at the top. Just, you know, figure it out. <laughs> That's at the top level, right? Everyone, at the, everyone's there at the top. At that level, I could see why you wouldn't necessarily want to help your opponent get better. Because they're already giving you a hard time. And if you figured out something about them, you're at the top. There's nowhere else, but, there's nowhere else to go but there, right? But if you're not at the top and you're doing that, it's stupid. It's dumb as fuck. Because you're not at the top. You can only do that if you're at the top. If you think you're at the top, and you're doing that because you think you're top when you're not. That's dumb. <laughs> dumb shit. Uh, I, can I can't confirm that I am probably a silver or low gold at best in Japan. I can't confirm that, so I'm a decent for a foreigner. Yeah, you are. I'm sure you are. Um, yeah, I mean, shit. I DM'd Sheila to be like, yo, how'd you do that thing? And he told me, made videos and sent it to me. I'll be forever grateful for that. Like, sent me multiple videos to explain what he was doing and why. I love that. So, I personally find, have found that online, the, the modern VF, the modern VF in general, FGC is far less toxic than it was in the arcade era. That like people who were well suited to that environment 
speak fondly of. Look, you know, a wistful. Oh, it looks so beautiful. Man, Chinatown Arcade with a ruthless motherfucking place. Ruthless. Don't tell your kid. Don't teach your kid shit. I had the same problem with Street Fighter as well, and Marvel too. Like, granted, I was a kid. I was like young, but I was good. I would have, I would have understood if they, if they told me what they were doing and how they do it. But people putting their quarters in, right? And in that instance, there is something on the line, which is your 25 cents or 50 cents. So fuck this kid. I'm not gonna tell this kid how to beat my ass. How do I do that? All right. That's when you're fighting grown ass adults or like teenagers and you're like an eight year old, right? Those are the, I was that little kid in the arcade. I think I was not too annoying. <laughs> Online takes this takes off, so your fighting spirit weakens? Depends, depends. Depends. On average, level of play in all games right now is much higher than it ever was in the arcade payday era. Players are stronger now on average because knowledge is actually shared. There's no more saving that for majors shit. You can't do that. Doesn't work. Oh, I have a sandwich in the fridge. I just remembered. I don't need to make, I don't need to make, I don't need to make fries. I might still make fries. I don't know. Let me, let me, I'm gonna start my air fryer warm up. I grab a rose whip. Um. I was just chatting, really. Oh, we're talking about arcade days. Days when people would not share tech. <laughs> because there were there was money in the line. There was your 25 cents. The whole thing was about how many sets can I get on this 25 cents? And the better you were. I'm doing all right. Just finished playing with Rock. Um, I am debating what I'm going to do right now. I have a few things to do. They could wait till tomorrow. I don't have to do them right now. I might do them tomorrow morning. My laundry, I have to do my laundry. That's the thing. <laughs> so I'm like, I could do it tomorrow morning. I want to play Tekken. And laundry takes about two hours to do. I'm sorry to finish. I could probably eat dinner while I'm doing the first wash cycle. This is about 45 minutes. And then. When I start the dryer cycle, it's about an hour, sometimes 75 minutes, depending on how long it close, so 75 minutes probably. Uh, so the drying and wash will be done by like, ten, basically 10 o'clock, which is technically after when our, our laundry closes, because it does close at like nine. Um, I'd, have, I'd have to figure that out. I can still get down there, it just becomes harder to do. But I have to like carry shit upstairs. Um, I want to play this song for y'all. I was playing it during my set earlier today. 
but I uh, want to put it on. Just waiting for my YouTube history to fucking load. It's taken a very long time. There it is. This one. This shit right here. Fucking. Yo, when this song played in the story, during like the final battle, this shit plays. And it's just so epic. This is when I broke my voice. This is what hurt my voice. This moment. Feels good. I need to get back to work, sadly. Oh, bummer. Well, hope you have a good day at work. Good night at work. Whatever you have to do. Glad you swung by and hung out. And stuff. You know, that's fun. And, um, yeah. Oh, homework. Oh, yeah, do your homework. Do your homework. Um, I'm so glad to be done with that. So when I'm like done working, that's why this weekend I could just play fucking Tekken the entire weekend. I could just sit here and play Tekken the whole time. And I've never been able to do that. But I've always had fucking schoolwork to do. So I had to like do some schoolwork and then play a couple hours of Tekken or whatever the fuck I wanted to play. But now I can literally just go home, be done with work and play whatever fucking game I want to play for as long as I want without worrying about, oh, I have to do this other thing for school. So like, in a lot of ways, it's easier to be strong when you're not a student. Because you don't have to do student shit. You can just do your game shit. It's awesome. It's awesome. Like, I think there's this idea that, like, it's easier to be good at a game when you're a kid. And it's not. It's, it's way easier than adults. It's way easier. Now, now, granted, if you're, like, being delinquent on your studies, then, yeah, sure, you can be good at whatever game you're playing. And, and like, but you're fucking the rest of your life off. Don't do that. Do your fucking schoolwork and then play your game. The game's going to be there. Your schoolwork has time limit. You have to get it done. Get it done when you're done with the games. When you're done with the fucking uh, schoolwork, you can play games. That's what I've always done. And, uh, you know, I'm a doctor. So, like, you can, and I'm good at the games, right? You don't have to choose one or the other. I highly advise you not to do that. One of the best players in the world that I've ever spoken to are highly successful professionals. You don't have to know life this shit. It, the skills you learn to be good at these games is totally transferable to your skills in your professional life and your schooling. It's got to find the corollaries and I could probably explain it one of these days, but there isn't a huge difference. College just leads, lets you balance on your time in travel. Reason I went to Japan because I quit a job after I made more money, but my money is right. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, college lets you balance it if you have money. If you don't have any money, the like guy didn't, then you can't do shit. You can't travel for nothing. I couldn't travel that much. I couldn't travel until I had a job. Then I could travel. So I couldn't afford it. And like this upcoming year, I'm going to be like this year to next year, I'm going to be traveling so much. I'm going to be going to all the shit where BF is. And I'll do like BF and I'll play Tekken. I'll play both. I'll travel and play Tekken and BF. Because I'll be able to afford it. Finally. Not right now, but like in about eight months, eight months to like a year. I'll be able to actually go to things. College, uh, BF has a lot of strong, successful adults. We have professional, respectful adults. We have families. Yeah, yeah. Folks who, you know, take care of business and you play games. You both. You really can do both. Not neither or. I don't fully know why that became a thing of like, oh, you have to do one or the other. You can do like five things at once, you know? Yeah, I want to travel around the world and beat ass and virtual fighter and maybe eventually Tekken. Oh well. Tekken remains to be seen, but.
I do want to beat ass in Virtual Fighter. For sure. For fucking sure. Did I pick the right one? Oh, I gotta go through the whole thing again. No. No. The history has to load. Boo. World War Yeah, that'd be nice. Like, go to Australia. Go to Italy. Go to, um... What's the other place I'm thinking of? Japan. This is the other song that plays during the finale of story mode. This is the, I think, yeah, this one, when, when this one plays, Bye, Dark. Thanks for dropping by during your studies break. So I'm so glad I have these like sessions planned out because real talk. So I didn't know how much I was going to like Tekken 8. I didn't. I really didn't. I didn't love Tekken 7. It was okay, but I didn't like love it. And on PS4, online was abysmal. Holy shit, it was just god awful dog shit. So, and I really care about online. Like, if online's not good, I'm not going to play a game. Except for Virtual Fighter. But Virtual Fighter is an exception because I have an offline scene and I'm already good at Virtual Fighter. So, like, I can continue to get better without having to worry about online. Of other options but in newer games it's really hard to get into them if the online scene is not like prominent or available or works part of why i don't play strive even though strive has a good online scene i really found the lobby system like the fucking hotel shit really aggravating to deal with i i found it super aggravating so stop playing it um I have to find not just the game one, but I also have to find find the process of playing the game fun. The process of losing fun. Everything has to align. Or like I won't wanna play a game. I'll I'll get bored, I'll get frustrated. I just be in a park and strive or in player matches on strive. Yeah, that's so much extra work. I just want to hop on rank or hop on a quick battle, like as I'm learning the game, right? Once I'm, once I'm hooked, once I'm in, once it's got me in its grasp, then, okay, then we can do, you know, lobbies, then we can do, you know, parks and shit, but it has to grab me first. And if I'm finding it like super, like when I started playing BF5, it was the first, really good 3d online fighter like vanilla I'm talking about vf5 vanilla it had decent online for its time best it's probably the best up until tekken 8 um maybe tekken 7 so i liked the game it was new it had online shit if tekken had come out with good online i probably would have played tekken but it didn't it came out with shit ass online unplayable and there were no arcades around me at the time who had uh, Tekken 6. There were no arcades at all. So there was no like offline scene where I was. So I had to play online. And I couldn't wait to get out of there to come out to New York and play here. Which, you know, there's a scene for everybody here. It's great. Um, so, yeah. Online being good for Virtual Fighter 5 Vanilla is the direct reason and the result my current player ability and status is a 100% direct result of that uh, 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 good. No, no, not that song. I'm just going to keep playing the song. It's really, it's really fucking good. Is that like a longer version of this? Tag 2 kind of had better online from 6. I heard it was 
Well, my 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 recollection is it was also ass. I I felt Tekken two tag two had the same netcode as six. Maybe I don't know. Um. So yeah, it felt the same to me, from my, my recollection. But the problem with Tekken Tag 2 for me is that I dropped it at 6. Like Tekken 5, I was in, hard, in that shit, tried to get good, didn't have access to the resources to really get very good, but I, I tried, and I was decent amongst regular people. <laughs> people who weren't part of FGC proper. I didn't really know what FGC proper back then as, a, as an entity. And... When Tekken 6 came out, um, what was it? Tekken 6 came out when? When did Tekken, Te Tekken 6 came out when? Now, now we're going to do some Tekken 6. Tekken 6 came out in 2007. Virtual Fighter 5 release. VF5 came out in 2006. I mean home console, down arcade, not arcades. When, when was it on the systems? When was it relevant to someone like myself? There are no arcades around me. There's no VF5 in arcades. In 2005? No. Yeah, the first location effort. So VF came out. And, and for Tekken 6, it's not Tekken 6, really, it's Tekken 6 VR. So the first, take a look here. PlayStation PSP, 2009. BF6, I mean, Tekken 6 came out in 2009. It's when I graduated from, high, from college. BF was released in 2006. And when did it hit consoles? The first location that the original release was in Japanese arcade. An export version B was released to arcades outside of Japan in 07. Version B revised was in 2006 and was deported. So, version B was revised in, for release to February 2007. 2007 is when it came, when VF5 vanilla came out. That was the one I played online. That was the one I played. That's what I learned how to play VF on. That game. That was the one. Not FS. I was already decent by then. I still had a lot. Of, I still had a lot of growing to do. But I was already decent. Already hooked in. Uh, and like eight because I got four, and TC that was on your PS3. I didn't have a PS3, so yeah, it was. Um, so in PS3, the PS3 version, I was playing that at my friend's house. I I like bike to his house and play there, because he had a PS3. I didn't. And then let's see. It was ported to 360 version C in later, later in 07. So we had, so February, beginning of the year, we had, and I had to go to my friend's house to play. And then later in that year, I would have it at home. I had an Xbox. I played it on that. And when did Street Fighter come? Street Fighter, Street Fighter 4? It was out on Xbox in 2009. Really? I thought it came out earlier than that. Huh. Well, July. Because I recall playing that at my friend's house, too. Huh. That's, that's Windows. It was on Xbox. It was still it was February 2009. It was my final semester at college. My final semester, I was playing that game. Because I, I have vivid memories of playing it in college. So... I was playing that in 2009. So VF had already been out for like two years. I was already grinding that game. Then Tekken 6 comes out. I guide it. I play it online in like late 2009. So I already graduated by then and was now working. And then I, I was working and like it was exhausting. So I, and I had a really bad online like setup. So online also kind of sucked for me. 
So I had a bad online setup and I had a game that had shitty online, so I needed a good netcode. And um, so it just was untenable. I, I just couldn't play it. Just, just couldn't do it. I had Vanilla Fear 5 too because Evo. Yeah, I, I was playing Evo a lot too. I had a friend who, like, me and I, he and I would play Evo together. Fear 4 Evo. Um, so that was fun. And, and then Tekken 6 came out, didn't totally love the system. But mainly I didn't like the online. So I had no one to play. I had literally no one to play. So, Fear 5 it is. Then Tekken. And, 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 and I'd, I'd gotten hooked in the VF by then. I was, I was fully in. I was traveling for Virtual Fighter 5. Like a year after I, like in 2008, I was traveling for that shit. Um, like meeting people and doing stuff like that. So that was like my game. I played Street Fighter, but I wasn't like super good. Uh, I never got really good at that game. I was just, yeah, just went VF yeah, all the way. Tekken Tag 2, built on Tekken 6. So the things, because I didn't play Tekken 6, I didn't learn those mechanics. Tekken Tag 2, built on those mechanics in Tekken 6. So I, I just, I was too far behind. And there were like more characters and I had to like, it was overwhelmed. So I was like, ah, oh, fuck this. And the online was shit. But I, I played it and I had fun with that. I had a lot more fun with that one. I played a lot more of it because I like John. I like John and Asuka, I like those two characters together. So I found that to be very enjoyable. But I also didn't like the way Ling Xiao Yu played in um, Tekken 6. I really like Ling a lot. I also didn't like how she felt in Tag Torment 2. I liked my favorite Ling actually isn't Tekken 5 Ling. It's Tekken 4 and 3 Ling. They're very different kinds of Ling. I like those two versions of her a lot. Didn't like her in 5 all that much. I went to Asuka instead. And also I just liked Asuka. So I, I went full in on her. And I played Oscar in every version from then on, except for this one. This one, I'm going back to fucking, uh, I almost called her Eileen, but I'm going back to fucking Ling. The reason why I play Eileen is because she has a similar style of play in a lot of like ways to, to, to Ling. Ling even has the monkey donkey kit back turn. So like there, there's a similarity in characters that I like to play across games, except for Cammy. Cammy's unique. She's her own beast. She's just an offensive bulldozer, and I just, I just like her. I didn't have online a lot around the time. Oh, solo leveling like the anime, and then hold my skills till tag two. I got online. Then I went from there. I hear that. I hear that. Um, yeah, I played offline back then too. But just, I didn't become competitive. I didn't. I didn't have a desire to be competitive at that game. With Tekken Seven, the one Seven come out at home, 2017. So then I'm in the midst of my doctoral program. I'm just worn out. Through like from 2013 to like. 2019 those six years six right three yeah six years i wasn't really getting a lot better at vf because i wasn't i didn't have the time i just didn't uh i had to study i had to do work i i just i didn't have the bandwidth to focus on the vf all that much i was getting better but at a really slow rate and i was fine with that i wasn't like mad at myself about it it was just what it was and it wasn't until 2019 when i had a lot more time to dedicate to the game that i got like a lot better uh, a lot better so my eileen today because over the years i've gotten like relative to my own strength level i've gotten worse and better like for a time my 2013 play style was my best play style like and like i never really reached that same peak for like years partly because that's when i hurt my hand i i started using um keyboard mouse uh, the hitbox because my hand was starting to hurt but then i injured it bad and i couldn't move my hand and i couldn't play for like a year at all so after that year of not being able to play, 
I got a lot of work, just technical wise. And I had to figure out how, okay, how I play this game without hurting my hand. I had to play for 20 minutes, ice it, then play for 20 more minutes, and then ice it again. And I had to just take breaks. So when I go to the sessions, I like bring my own ice pack and be like, hey, I, I can play for 20 minutes and I gotta stop for like 15. And um, it, would annoy, it would annoy some people who wanted to just marathon death battle, but I physically couldn't do it. It hurt. Uh, and I knew I wanted to keep playing, so if I didn't kind of find a way to play, I didn't end up hurting myself, my hand specifically, I wasn't going to be able to keep playing this game competitively like I like to. And I was already competitive at that point. I was already sucked in, right? This is what births all of the different approaches I have to playing this game, to studying this game, and to training in this game. That's why I don't like wasted sets. Wasted sets meaning sets. If I'm trying to get better, if I'm training to get better game skill, I want to play in a certain context that I know optimizes that ability for me. That's it. Because I know I can't waste time because my hand will get hurt. Every time I'm playing this game, I'm always thinking, okay, how much is this going to hurt my hand? <laughs> now I can play for like hours. I was playing Tekken for like 12 hours the other day, yesterday, and my hand was okay. It was looking a little sore, but I know when to back off. I take a break and I back off. That, so because, part because of that, I, I couldn't play VF, relearn the game on a new input device, relearn a way of playing the game in like 2014, 2015. And, oh, by the way, Tekken 7 just dropped and like, I'm still, Figuring out how to backdash cancel without hurting myself or fuzzy guard on reaction. I still don't do fuzz. Um, the reason why I don't break staggers very well, because I, I, I can I, and I could, I used to break them very well back on joystick, is because I can't physically practice it. It hurts. If I practice staggering for like more than five minutes, my hands start to hurt. And then I can't play for like a week, potentially. Or if I get really even blamed, I won't be able to play like a month. So in my head, I made the calculus of, well, am I gonna practice staggering so that I can get better at this one skill that doesn't happen that often, that I could just try not to get staggered in the first place and just not feel the whole situation to begin with? Or am I gonna practice it and hurt my hand and potentially not be able to play for a month or two or three, or maybe a year if I really fuck it up, like I did way back in 2013. So there's like a physical risk associated with, with practicing that technique i just i i think it should be gone personally i think it i think not just because hitbox have a hard time with it i think it's just and it used to destroy joysticks back in the day too in the arcade it was a joystick destroyer it would just destroy your would destroy everything it destroys your body bad fucking technique it's a bad fucking mechanic i hate it it's the worst get rid of it so yeah Tekken 7 is coming out during that time, and I'm just like, no. But Tekken 8, now, I'm graduated. I'm free. I'm working, regular job. I have decent hours, uh, decent income. I can I can do this, right? I can get into this one. That's good online. Now, Street Fighter 6 also has good online. All the same situations are still true there for Street Fighter 6 that are true for Tekken 8. Big difference though is uh, transferable skills. So a lot of skills from Virtual Fighter directly transfer over into Tekken. Like directly. It's not like you have to do a corollary or like some other component. That, no. In, in, in Tekken, a lot of shit directly one-to-one -one transfers over. You don't have to. And their importance directly transfers over. How you do it in Tekken is different. The inputs to achieve certain things are different, but the mentality, the approach is the same. So, I have got to learn matchups. I know how to react to a fucking 25 frame move. I know that an 18 frame move is unreactable and, and, and throw that shit out. I know about throw, I know how to do throw breaks. Like, I know how to move in three dimensions. I know Oki in a three dimensional setting, how to work with a wall. How to walk with a wall break. Like, those aren't foreign concepts. And all of those skills are relevant to Tekken. 
that shit's not relevant in Street Fighter 6. So I'm starting from a lower point in Street Fighter 6 than I am for Tekken. And so, like, I'm finding it far more enjoyable because I can use more of my well-trained, like, over a decade practice skill set. That's awesome. Like, BF5 came out for me in 2008. It's almost 20 years now. I've been playing that game competitively. I was asked at the beginning, but I've been playing the game for a long ass time. So I would like to play a game that I can use some of those things and still be good at it. So am I going to become like really good at Tekken? Probably not. It's not going to be like no arson ass motherfucker, but I can be pretty good. I can get pretty good at this game if I really put my mind to it and try to. And we'll see. We'll see how good I get. But I can feel it. I can feel and see the potential uh, in that game that I don't have in Street Fighter VI. I just, I just don't. Um, and I'm liking Lang. It's great. So I'm going to end the stream because I need to eat. I'm going to go eat. I think I'll cut this second part as like a separate video. <laughs> I don't know what I'll call it. Like, I don't know. Why Tricky is playing second eight or something. I, I basically just went, went through my competitive journey with you all, which a lot of folks don't know. Like, a lot of folks don't know my journey competitively, like where I started, what games I played. They just see me now or recent, or, you know, in the recent past and like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is what she's always done. I'm like, no, 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 no. I played ST. That was that. I played ST. I played all those games. Well, everyone calls it ST now. For me, it was Super. I didn't have ST. I had Super. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And I think it's also like nice to hear like alternative stories about like the arcade histories of people's experiences. Uh, it might give more insight into why I kind of behave the way I do when it comes to online, when it comes to the community. And like being inviting and teaching people and trying to just generally be a welcoming space. Because I've been in the shitty one. I have. It's shit. It Suck. It was in person. People can be dicks in person. I had that. So I don't have that like warm, fuzzy, oh, everything was good back in the day. No, it was not. It was not. It's better now because we've made it better. That's why. We will keep it that way and it still can get better. I just don't like the like glorification of the old toxic arcade days. Um, quite by people who I think probably were just the ones who were benefiting from the toxicity. Who were in the in group and like thrived in that environment and everyone does I didn't for sure I just stopped going after a while like oh I guess I'll just not play this basically I only came back when online became a thing and now I'm here think about how many other players are the same and I could tell you the same story about the arcade era about the modern era The raid. Uh, uh, uh. They've been hanging out. Uh, I got a late start, so I'll do tech and off stream. For Virtua Fighter. Virtua Fighter has been abandoned.